Good evening and thank you for joining us. For 13 years now, people who have been touched by cancer have been attending the Relay for Life to find comfort and to also remember. The cancer, Canadian Cancer Society brought together a group of people today who were looking to learn more about the disease. The luncheon had plenty of guest speakers talking about their run-ins with cancer and how they got through it. The event was a precursor to the Relay for Life that happens in June. The Relay is the Canadian Cancer Society's largest fundraiser and their goal this year is $183,000. All of that money stays in the region to help those affected by cancer. The event generally draws in around 1,000 people as it's open to everyone. The sense of support the event brings? It's overwhelming really. It's very emotional. I, I tend not to be on the more emotional side, but I tell you, when I see survivors and come to these, I do tear up and uh, it's quite empowering. It's also a great way for everyone to come together and support and celebrate those people who are battling cancer, who have won their battle with cancer, and to remember those who have lost their battle with cancer. The Relay for Life will begin at 7 p.m. on Friday, June 13th. Premier Kathleen Wynne has filed a libel notice against opposition leader Tim Hudak. It's over the accusations she was behind an alleged plan to wipe computer hard drives in the Premier's office to hide documents related to the cancellation of two gas plants. Spokeswoman for Wine says libel notice have been served to the Ontario Progressive Conservative Party and Tory MPP Lisa McLeod. Wen says Tuesday that her lawyer had sent Hudak a cease and desist order. Ontario Provincial Police have alleged in court documents that the computer access was given by David Livingston, McGuinty's former chief of staff. But Wynne says no member of McGuinty's staff had access to the Premier's office after she took over. Five new companies have been launched into Thunder Bay's growing entrepreneurial field, and they did it with the help from the Co-Starter Mentorship Program. The five companies and their founders have spent the last three months in the program working inside the Northwestern Ontario Innovation Centre with mentors and staff. They've taken their products and services from conception to creation. Ahmet Shahan is the co-founder of the new business called Recoup. He says CoStarter gave them the opportunity to come to Thunder Bay from India. CoStarter manager Terry Smith says their goal was to shorten the amount of time. It's our job at the Innovation Centre to try and help small businesses, but we've never been able to have a more direct impact than we have with this program. So entrepreneurs need three things. They need time, space, and money. And that's what this program was all about, was giving them that and that opportunity. And without this program, a lot of them wouldn't have had the opportunity to start their companies up. Our product is a subscription-based hiring platform for entry-level talent, where we allow companies to create challenges so that they can verify skills of job seekers even before they interview them. And this gives job seekers an opportunity to stand out from the crowd and demonstrate their skills. Shahan says the mentorship he received at CoStarter was very helpful as they connected him with different mentors which gave him very useful feedback. The CoStarter Accelerator is a three-month mentorship driven program. Companies receive an investment of $15,000 in exchange for a minor equity stake in their business. Farmers in and around Thunder Bay City gathered at the annual Spring Farm Conference this past week. The farmers were discussing new trends, technology and farming methods that will help them improve their yield and bottom line. Integral to every type of farming is soil and in order to keep one's soil in the best possible condition, the conference brought in experts on soil from the Ministry of Agriculture. There were also guest speakers on crops which will improve soil health and better profitability. Tarlok Sahota with the local agricultural research station is certified crop advisor and spoke at the conference about bottom line improvement. Whatever yield they get, farmers get, whether it's a crop or, or meat or anything, and then at what cost, right? So that means the value of the produce, that means the yield into market price, minus whatever cost they incur, that, that goes on the net return. In the last couple of years, we've seen great increases in the profitability of farming. We've seen a better, a greater demand for local produce, for local food, as well as uh, demand worldwide growing for knowing where your good quality food is coming from, which is what we produce here in Thunder Bay, some of the best quality food in the world. In addition to the discussion about soil quality and management, there were also speakers who focused on livestock and the issues surrounding their well-being. Reed said he is pleased to see more young farmers getting into the business and he attributes that to the turnaround in the market and the new methods for increasing profitability. 
The looming mining boom in northwestern Ontario is going to impact each community differently. But Sioux Lookout is taking a proactive approach, calling on development to come both harder and faster. John Thompson reports. This winter's cold has been a wrench in the gears of Tamaka Gold's plans to drill its Golan project almost 18,000 feet deep. The potential mine, located 22 kilometers south of Sioux Lookout, anticipates some of that work will be finished, but Tamaka remains committed to the project, partly because of its proximity to nearby infrastructure. Sioux Lookout Mayor Dennis Laney says that investment proves a return is expected, and expansion is in the town's immediate interest. Well, we have an airport that's very, very active. We do 118,000, 120,000 people through here a year. We have got the property out there that can be um, developed into... Uh, holding areas uh, for everything. We've got enough area and property that we can develop into residential or housing areas for the mine itself. Um, and then we have the transportation. The shifting winds in mining have galvanized the town known as the hub of the north. Sioux Lookout intends to conduct infrared thermology studies on staked land surrounding the municipality. It will then contact companies holding claims to remind them Sioux Lookout is ready. We're going to look underground. We're going to uh, take a study of the mineralization in the area. We're going to use a 60-kilometer radius. Um, we're reaching out to neighboring communities, Ignace and Pickle. I think there's an opportunity for us to be a good neighbor and support them in some of their efforts. Um, staying focused that we do have a very busy airport and an expansion that will allow companies to locate. Part of that new alliance is aspiring to be the air and roadways to the biggest mineral promise of them all, the Ring of Fire. Pickle Lake Mayor Roy Hoffman sees a united voice for investing in an east-west road as well as energy infrastructure as the keys to stimulating mining development along the corridor. Sioux Lookout has been on board, Dryden's been on board, uh, Ignis has been on board, obviously we're on board and we're hoping to work together to uh, uh, give as much support as we can to Noron. And part of when we went down to Ogre was to let the government of Ontario know that uh, Listen, we missed the boat on, on, on this first round. We had this big mining boom and all these discoveries were found. But um, because there was no infrastructure in place, as in roads, power, and so on, nothing happened. So we're really pushing the government to, come on, let's get some infrastructure in place. we got to put some money up front, get that infrastructure in so these companies can go. The struggling price of gold and a cooling Chinese economy have stunted the surge in global mineral markets. But the cyclical industry is bound to rise again. Before that happens, Sioux Lookout and its neighbors want all the spokes to be tight if it's to remain the hub of the north. John Thompson, TVT News. The mayor of Dryden says his community is still furious with the outcome of last year's mill assessment. And the city is once again refusing to pay for services rendered by the Municipality Property Assessment Corporation. For the second consecutive year, Dryden City Council has voted to withhold $25,000 in payment to MPAC. The city argues it was poorly pre represented in the 2013 process that saw the value of the Dom Tar Mill plummet from $51 million to $14 million. Dryden was also ordered to pay Dom Tar back $5.4 million in taxes collected between 2009 and 2012. The province forces municipalities to hire that they do work for us and we pay them. And this is one of the big issues that I've had with impact is that they seem to think that they can go out there and reassess property and come back and say, oh, by the way, we just de decreased this property four or five million. There is no communications. And one of the things that the uh, parliamentary assistant said, that is one of the bad things that impact has. They don't have communications. So why should I pay them? If they worked for us, I would fire them. Dryden's legal counsel has advised the city to keep the 2013 and 2014 payments in trust, and Naltel admits it's likely Dryden will eventually have to pay MPAC back. Dog owners who continue to walk their pets throughout the city unleashed could be facing a fine as high as $5,000. For our TV News question of the day, we wanted to know whether or not you support the crackdown on dog owners who allow their pets to run unleashed. I certainly do. All over the city. I think it's not enforced enough. I think so, yeah. They should be on a leash. They run into people's property and they do damage. 
they should be uh, unleashed. But if you want a dog, look after it. Probably is a hazard for some people that um, pets, and it's not fair to have them running loose. They should be tied up or leashed. All pets should be leashed, uh, especially when you're walking them. And same with cats. Cats should be in a house. They shouldn't be out running around. So I'm in favor of the uh, leash laws for sure. In certain areas, like for parks and all, it should be cleaned up. But springtime is the worst time. There's not much you can do. $5,000.